Hey everybody, it's Marshall again. I wanted to do another video about Vaxxed. One day I'm going to run out of things to say on this, but I wanted to explore this side of things before I moved on. So I wanted to talk to me. <laughs> I wanted to talk about skepticism today and how it is the backbone of science. Now, I think there's a common misconception among people who don't understand understand science as well as they should about uh, science being a collection of facts and rules. And that's partially true, but the main backbone of science is the is skeptical inquiry. It's saying, can I replicate what someone else has done? Can I test their theories? Can I come up with a different theory that supports the facts? And can I test that theory? And this is really in my mind and in a lot of reputable people's mind, the backbone of science rather than a collection of laws about gravity and the speed of light and that sort of thing. Uh, these things that we take to be rules are only rules if they can consistently stand up to testing and evidence. And I wanted to relate this to the uh, Vaxxed film and to Wakefield in general. We had uh, a few bloggers covered the question and answer session, which, again, a lot of our members were there for that. They were there for the film and the question and answer session. And I was really struck by some of the things that got passed on uh, from the crowd, because it's evident that the crowd does not embrace the skepticism side of science. And they might come back and say, oh, well, we're skeptical of scientific community at large, and this and that, and okay, there is that, but that's not a broad view of what skepticism is. Uh, there were people making claims during the question-answer session, such as cancer was created, AIDS was created, and autism was created too, and I believe that they're, rela they're re uh, referring to Big Pharma in those statements. And that in particular stuck out to me because I have long loved like the classics of literature and uh, science and philosophy and I know for instance that our words for uh, for carcinogen comes from ancient Greek uh, karkino which is their word for crab and they called it that because they um, the Greeks didn't open up the body that wasn't a thing that was in Greek medicine um, as far as I know, that wasn't really in the Western tradition until the Renaissance, where they really started to, or maybe late medieval, they started to open up the bodies and really inspect what's inside them. Um, but Greek medicine, ancient Greek medicine, that was not a thing. So what they did do is if there was a lesion on the body, they would cut that open. That wasn't sacrosanct, and they used the the crab as their model for how uh, angiogenesis happened. And angiogenesis is when uh, a tumor convinces the body to create new blood routes to support blood pumping to the tumor cells and propagating. Uh, so they used it to, to sort of describe how these tumors were mapped. Um, and that's the origin of that word uh, cancer, when it got translated into Roman, their word for the same, the same creature was canker or cancer. So when they started writing about it, they used those terms. We even have evidence from ancient Egypt. So well before the Greeks started writing down about cancer and studying it, the ancient Egyptians were able to recognize it as well. So if we're talking about cancer being created, that is a red flag to me that we need to do some inquiry um, because I don't know, maybe it's ancient aliens that are creating cancer. I don't know. Maybe that's part of their analysis that I'm not looking at. And one person making that conclusion is not necessarily worrying to me. The worrying part to me is that this was said in a room with Wakefield who is still, you know, he has his PhD, he's not uh, licensed to practice medicine anywhere, but 
he still puts forth that he is a scientist. That's what he's basing his reputation on. And the basis of science is skepticism. He should be able to stand up to or challenge these viewpoints. But it hurts him to do so because he is doing this for the money. If he stands up to people's assumptions and fears and their uh, silver bullets of where all the problems in their life come from, he's going to be out of a job. Um, so he fosters this very unscientific viewpoint and he can't really stand up and challenge it. Challenge it. And I find that very disturbing. Um, I think that's a definite red flag for anyone who actually understands what science is about. Um, I know that other people at that um, at the um, question and answer session were accusing some people who were um, asking some very heated questions at Wakefield of being uh, possessed by the devil and that sort of thing, or on drugs. That was their in-depth analysis is that this person is either on drugs or possessed by the devil. I don't, I think it's his duty to to say that that's not the case, to say something about that. Um, so when he's faced with the very dubious claims that come from uh, the larger part of this community, which is, which I think of as the uh, conspiracy theory um, community, he cannot use science to address those claims because it would undermine his own outrageous claims and it would sort of, his house of cards would topple. And for me that's very scary, it's very worrisome. Uh, let me look at my notes and see if there's anything else here. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. Just I wanted to recognize that you must allow room for these outlandish, unresearched, unresearchable, uh, and some frankly dangerous conclusions that people are coming to, he will not take responsibility for them, he will not take responsibility for calling them out or challenging them because of, it, you know, that's his paycheck. And I find that very, very worrisome. So, anyway, this has been Marshall Edwards, and um, if I think of anything else that I think is urgent to say about the uh, protest, I will, but I just wanted to put that out there because I've been chewing on it for a while and um, I wanted to get it out to you. So thank you very much. About science and skepticism.